that joint that ought to be open according to the plans, Jerry. Plans, plans, nothing but plans. You spend more time planning than doing anything else, Bob. That's why when we do something, we do it right. Yep, here's the window, all right. Yeah. Well, what's with your fancy plans, Bob? It ain't open. But the plans say it will open. Let's try it. Okay, but we're going to end up busting it and sounding off an alarm. You nuts. What do you think I just cut those wires back there for? So nobody could turn the lights on in this joint? So the alarm bell wouldn't go off either. Oh. My plans say the alarm system here hasn't got use of its own. It comes in on the electric light wires. Let's try this window. Okay. Hey. The window opened, all right. Sure. According to the plans. Now let's climb in. Be quiet when we do. I'll go first. Yeah, and I'll keep a lookout behind us. <clears throat> or do our fancy plan say there ain't gonna be nobody behind us. And if we do everything on time, so far we're right on schedule. Well, I'm in. Here, give me your hands, Jerry. I'll pull you up. Yeah, sure. Now, up you go. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, I'll hop in by myself. There. Shh, you fool. Look, if you got this all planned, you planned it so there's nobody around, didn't you? Yeah, but it's hard to figure what people will do to cross your ideas. And the safe should be right over there on that wall just in front of us. According to the plans, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Come on, use your flashlight. Keep it shining on the floor. Don't worry. There. How's that? Okay. There's the safe. Let's go. Ain't much of a safe, is it? We don't want the safe, just what's in it. Let's get to work on it. I haven't got much time. So it's me. Yeah. This safe is exactly what I thought it was. This is going to be easy. Good. Quiet about it. Yeah, sure. You got it? Not yet. You can turn off your light if you want. Just feeling my way now. Yeah, sure. There you are. It's off. Not quiet. i got to concentrate. Hey, what was that? <laughs> that was it. The safe's open. Hey, you ain't kidding either, Bob. It sure is open. Turn on the flashlight again. Yeah, sure. There you are. Hey, look at those two rocks. Just like you planned. Two diamonds. Big diamonds, Jerry. And matched like they were twins. And now they're going to make us a pile of dough, just like I planned. And now meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Blackie, my name is Ernest Harvey. I'm an insurance adjuster. Maybe you won't like my reason for coming to see you. If it's to adjust my insurance, I won't. I'm satisfied with mine just the way it is. Well, it's not for that, Blackie. I need your help in locating the Willowbrand diamonds. Oh, that pair of match stones that disappeared last night? Yes. Well, I don't know what makes you think I can find them. It's a job for the police. I realize that. The police are working on the case right now, but I think you can be of invaluable assistance regardless. Thanks for the compliment. But uh, what makes you think I can help in this particular case? We're certain that two well-known professionals stole those diamonds. I happen to know you have very definite contacts with the underworld. Whatever characters I don't know, know me. Is that what you mean? Somehow you can find out things that nobody else can. You realize those contacts might be helpful now, don't you? Yes, I suppose so, Mr. Harvey. Well, my firm will pay you well if you'll test those contacts. See if you can get us a lead on those missing stones. Okay, Mr. Harvey, that sounds fair. Well, you've made your contact. Now I'll make mine. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Shorty. I knew you'd find out what I wanted to know. I'll call you later if I need anything. Bye. Well, Blackie? Well, Mary, that was Shorty, and we already have a break in the Willowbrand diamond case. Didn't take you long, did it, Blackie? (laughs) Only because it didn't take Shorty long. My first idea was that the thieves would break up the stones and we'd never find them. But their value is in their size and the fact that they they are two perfectly matched diamonds. So they are intact, Shorty says. What else did he say? Well, according to the short one, 
The thieves are going to sell the diamonds to a foreign buyer. Oh, they're going to be taken overseas. Apparently. The foreigner is a Frenchman named Jacques Pierre. He's going to buy the stones this afternoon through a fence named Dalton. Well, if I know my blackie, Mr. Dalton is going to have a visitor before Jacques Pierre gets there. You know your blackie, all right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be Monsieur Jacques Pierre, Mademoiselle, tout de suite and all that. Who are you calling? <laughs> Faraday. Going to try out your French accent? Not till I get down to see Dalton. And when I do get there, I'm going to talk him into the fact that I'm a Frenchman and out of those diamonds. Oh, you think that will be easy, do you? Easy or hard, I'm going to do it just the same. Faraday speaking. Inspector, this is Blackie. And this is a bad day in my life. Don't make it worse. Look, Faraday, are you interested in recovering the Willowbrand diamonds? No, I'm not in the least bit... What did you say? You heard what I said. Look, pal, don't ask me how I found out, because that's not important. But I know where the stones are. You do? Where are they? I'm really on a spot if I don't get those diamonds back. You're not on a spot. You're not big enough. You're on a speck. Anyhow, that isn't what I call for. It isn't? Well, what are you bothering me about? This is my busy day. If anybody asked you to name the alphabet, that could be your busy day. Faraday, you can tell whoever it is that's putting pressure on you that you'll have those diamonds back this afternoon. Just like that, huh? No, sweetheart, just like this. Listen. Here's what I want you to do. What can I do for you? Bonjour, monsieur. Uh, are you Monsieur Dalton? Yeah. Dalton's the name. Got something to hock, Frenchy? Hock? <laughs> ah, no, monsieur. I'm Jacques Pierre. I understand. Arrangements have been made for me to make a purchase from you. Is it all right to uh, talk here? In front of these two guys? Sure. He's like the friends of mine. Jerry Brown, Bob Jackson. Hi. Hello, Frankie. Ah, it is indeed a pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. That ain't such a pleasure. Now, look, Pierre. Jerry and Bob are partners in this deal with me. Let's talk about the Willie Brand diamonds right now. Certainement, certainement, monsieur. Monsieur. This I've never been called. Eh, uh, may I see the diamonds, please? Get them out, Bob. They're on the shelf in the safe. Right. Have them for you in a chip. It is well to tell you... I will know if they are the twin stones when I see them. Is it not, Monsieur Dulton? They are the McCoy, all right, pal. Well, Bob? Here you are, boss. Nice and snug in this case. Part of the plan, boss. Part of the plan. Why don't you shut up and hand over the stones to Dalton? I'll take that case, Bob. Here you are. Thanks. Well, Mr. Pierre, here it is. And here they are. Beauties, aren't they? Oh, mais oui, magnifique. Oh, may I examine them, please? Sure. Go ahead. Oh, this cigar of mine I leave on the counter. Do not be disturbed. It is not lit. Oh, these diamonds... Uh... Oh, magnifique. I've never seen their equal. You like them, huh? Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, who is that just came in? Huh? Came in? Well, nobody came in. I didn't see nobody. Me either. <laughs> Perhaps I made a mistake. In this case, now, there's two beautiful diamonds. I am satisfied. What do you mean, you're satisfied? Of course you're satisfied. What about the money for them? Uh, that I bring back with me this afternoon. After all, gentlemen, you did not expect I would come down with all this money to meet gentlemen of your reputation without first seeing the diamonds, did you? What happened to the plan, Bob? Why don't you get lost, Jerry? Hey, boys, what goes on here? Nothing, I guess. Frenchy says he'll be back this afternoon with a doll. That's okay with me. Merci. And now you will please excuse me. Au revoir, gentlemen. Hey, Dalton, you got the case, huh? Yeah. Only, it doesn't feel right. Hey, Hey, boys, the case is empty. Bob, right. you're nearest the door. Grab him. Don't worry. You ain't going anywhere, Frenchie. No place it. at all. I got a boss. Shut the door and drag him back here. Oh. Oh, that was a cute trick, Frenchie. Well, I, I... Only it didn't work. Get up those diamonds before we ship you back to France in plaster of Paris. Diamonds? But I have no diamonds. Hey, all of a sudden, boys, that accent sounds phony to me. And that mustache and goatee look phony, too. Shut them over here, Bob, while I see if they're real. Okay. <coughs> <Wait. laughs> 
Hey, they came off in my hand. Yeah, and look who Frenchie really is, boss. It's Boston Blackie. That's right, I'm Blackie, and here's my calling card. Oh! Now grab him, Bob. Hit him with that chair. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh! That got him, Bob. Now, grab him, and let's get him in the back of the shop. Okay, Doc. Come on, get hold of us other rob, Bob. Sure, okay. Hey, was that sock I got according to plan, too, huh? Hey, that's your relax. Oh. Coming to already. Oh. You can let go of him now. He can stand on his own two feet. Can't you, Blackie? Uh, uh-huh. Come out of that chair you slugged me with, Bob? Yeah. You were just lucky. You just hope I don't get lucky with this gun, Blackie. Search him, boys. Yeah, sure. What are you searching me for, Stand Dalton? Right. The Willie Brand diamonds. All right, reach in his pockets, Bob. You can't find the diamonds by just patting his clothes. Okay, okay. Any luck yet, fellas? No, dog. He doesn't, doesn't have them on this side. He ain't got them in any of these pockets either. Hey, what is this? He's clean, boss. He ain't got those diamonds nowhere. No? Then he swallowed them, Jerry. Swallowed them as he beat it out of here. Come on. We're going to drag him up to Doc Jones and have him use a fluoroscope on this bum. I'm sorry, Dalton, but the fluoroscope shows nothing. That's a good thing they tossed you out of med school. You couldn't tell a case of mumps without a search warrant, Doc. There's nothing wrong with me, Dalton. It's your theory. Blackie didn't swallow those diamonds. (laughs) I guess you fellas don't want me anymore. Shut up, Blackie. Doc, he's got to have swallowed them. He had to. They aren't on him. We went over everything he's wearing. He swallowed them, all right. Sorry, Dalton, but the fluoroscope shows that he did not swallow them. Believe me, he didn't. Then what happened to those diamonds? Where are they? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. All I know is he took them. If I did, where are they? Look, you don't want me anymore, do you? No, go on, get out of here. We don't want you, we want those diamonds. Dalton, you can't let him go. Why can't I? He hasn't got the stones, has he? You want the whole police force ganging up on us? Beat it, Blackie. Okay, but where are the rocks? Who does have them? Yeah, Jerry. I wonder what happened to the plans. <laughs> And he pulled this one off with ease, didn't we? Uh, did we, Blackie? I'll <laughs> oh, say so we did. Dalton and his pals have no idea how I got those diamonds out of the shop and got rid of them. Well, I don't blame them for being baffled. So am I. <laughs> what do you mean? The diamonds were in that cigar of mine. I had the cigar all prepared. It was hollowed out, and I slipped the diamonds in, threw it out on the street when those lugs grabbed me, and you were supposed to pick it up. You found the cigar on the street, didn't you? I did not. What? I didn't find anything. You still have the diamonds, don't you? No, of course not. I slipped them out of the case and put them in that cigar and tossed it in the gutter in front of the store, just as I told you I would on the telephone. Well, I didn't find a cigar or anything else. What is this, Blackie, a double cross? A double cross? Now, stop kidding, Faraday. You have the diamonds, haven't you? Don't give me that, Blackie. You have them. And you're going to give them to me. Faraday, you've never been so wrong about any two things in your life. Well, that's fine. That's great. I promised the commissioner I'd have those diamonds for him. Thanks to you and your ideas. Now, where am I? In a jam, Faraday, and I'm in it with you. That makes it unanimous. Where are those diamonds, Blackie? You don't know? No. Well, that's something else that's unanimous, too. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Two valuable diamonds are stolen, and Boston Blackie attempts to get them back. Posing as Jacques Pierre... A buyer of stolen jewels, Blackie steals the diamonds from a fence named Dalton in a plan in which Inspector Faraday of the police is to assist. But something goes wrong with the plan, and Faraday does not get the diamonds. Blackie doesn't have them, nor do the thieves. But as we return to our story, the real Jacques Pierre enters Dalton's store. What can I do for you? I am Jacques Pierre, monsieur. I'm seeking a Mr. Dalton. I'm Dalton. So you're really Pierre this time, huh? This time? Of course. What do you mean? Has there been a mistake? The whole thing was a mistake. But I took care of things. You want to buy those matched diamonds? It is right. They are for sale? Yes. For cash. Right now. That is agreeable with me. Where are they? Right here in my pocket. Very well. You show them to me. I will buy them. Good enough. Take a look. Ah, beautiful. 
Sure. And they gave me a beautiful headache. Some guy tried to lift them a while ago. Only I figured out his plan. Plan? Sure. He slipped the stones into a cigar and hurled the cigar into the street. Only I hopped out and got it a minute later. Now, look. My boys don't know I cut the stones out of that cigar. Oh? Uh-huh. You keep your mouth shut and I'll turn them over to you at a real bargain. Half price. Merci, merci. It is a deal. Where's the money? Thank you. Ten, twenty, twenty-five thousand. That is the price, is it not? That's right. Here you are. Thanks. And here are your diamonds. They're real, they're a bargain, and they're all yours. You see, I will take them. Au revoir. Goodbye. Taxi! Taxi! Sure, mister. Where to? You're down the boulevard. I will tell you where to stop. Sure thing, mister. Not yet where you want to go, mister? Uh, yes, uh, I wish to go to well, the... I wish again, Mr. Jacques Pierre, because I'm Boston Blackie, and you're going where I say. You, Boston Blackie. And where are we going? First to pick up my friend Mary Wesley, and then for a little ride in the country. All right. Yeah. You put your shirt back on now. You'll see. Mary, find anything in the cab? Not a thing, Blackie. Not a thing. <laughs> you must be very disappointed, Mr. Blackie. Frankly, I am. You don't have the diamonds on you. They aren't in the cab. You didn't swallow them. I didn't give you a chance to throw them out of the cab. Come on, put your shirt on. I'll drive you back to town. Merci, monsieur. But what then? Then I guess I'll have to let you go. I saw Dalton give you those stones. I thought I was smart. Frenchy, I'd give a lot to know how you took French leave of those diamonds. Hello. Mr. Dalton? Speaking. This is Jacques Pierre. Who? Jacques Pierre, you know who I am. I purchased the Willebrand diamonds from you a few hours ago. You? Yes, you know that I did. I don't even know that you are Jacques Pierre. No, well, I can tell you the price I paid for the diamonds. It was $25,000. That's the price you quoted me originally. So? So would I know that unless I were Jacques Pierre? Okay, I guess you're on the level. What do you want? Um, I ran into trouble with Monsieur Boston Blackie. I had to dispose of the diamonds temporarily. What do you mean? I mean, I know where they are, but I will not be able to get them back without help. Well, don't bother me about it. Get one of your own gang to help you. Mr. Dalton, I have not what you call gang. I do my work alone. But this is something in which I will need help. May I borrow one of your associates? Not a chance, Francie. The deal between you and me is closed. Tight. You're on your own. Perhaps, but I think not. Spread that out a little so that it makes sense. Certainly. You will help me, Monsieur Dalton, because if you do not, it will be necessary for me to inform your two assistants that you sold me the diamond and uh, forgot to tell them about it. Comprenez? That means understand? I understand. I'll meet you pronto. That means... Right away. Look, Blackie, don't clutter up my office. I feel bad enough without having to look at you. You feel bad, Friday. How do you think I feel? I know Pierre had those diamonds when he got into that cab. How do you know? Because I was watching while Pierre got them from Dalton. Pierre got into the cab with those diamonds, and he didn't throw them out of the cab on the way out into the country. Hey, maybe he tossed them out when you stopped for Miss Wesley. No, I watched them very carefully then. And on the way out to the country, Mary sat right beside me and Pierre in the front seat and watched him for me. You searched Pierre while Miss Wesley searched the cab, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Neither one of us found anything. But Pierre put those diamonds somewhere. Did something to them. And unless I miss my... Holy mackerel, I've got it. If you don't come up with those diamonds pretty soon, you're going to get it. Farley, listen. I know what Pierre did with those diamonds. Slipped them into the cuff on Mary's coat sleeve. 
What? That's the one place I never thought to look. In the cup of Mary's sleeve. Look, Faraday, Mary's life is in danger. Pierre's going to try to get those diamonds from her, and he'll stop at nothing to do it. I'll send a couple of squad cars to her place right away. I'll contact the radio cars in her neighborhood. They should be there in a couple of minutes. Well, I'll get Mary on the phone and try to stall things. Right. Oh, Mary, be at home. Or should I hope that you're not at home? Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Blackie. But look, don't call me by name. No, I am. Um, I won't. Somebody's there already, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, uh, look, take it easy. Faraday's sending up a couple of squad cars. But it may take a few minutes. We've got to stall. I see. Look, uh, who's there? Pierre? That's right. Anybody else? Right again. Uh, Dalton? Yes. Oh. Well, then you have lots of company. Dalton's men are with him, huh? No, no. Dalton's alone? Huh, that's funny. He doesn't like that lug to do his own dirty work. That's what he hired Bob and Jerry for. Listen, wait, I've got it. Call me Jerry, Mary, and put Dalton on the phone. Well, all right, Jerry, just a minute. Um, Mr. Dalton, somebody named uh, Jerry wants to talk to you. All right. Um, here he is, Jerry. Hello, Dalton. Yes, Jerry. How did you know I was here? You ain't up to any tricks, are you, Mr. Dalton? Why, no, Jerry. What makes you think so? Because me and Bob know what was supposed to happen according to the plans. And uh, you double-crossing us wasn't in our plans. Double-crossing you? Yeah, we know what you've done. You sold Frenchy those diamonds without even telling us you found them. Now, uh, we don't like that, Dalton. Radio cars are already on their way. Quiet, quiet, Faraday. Dalton thinks I'm a stooge. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh... Bob there, Jerry. Let me talk to him. I can explain everything. Bob ain't, uh... Well, he ain't in sort of a talking mood, Dalton. When it comes to double crosses, I do all the gabbing. Well, look, what do you want? No deal if that's how you're figuring to squirm out. We're just down a block from you, and we're going to kill you when you come out of the building. No. Look, Jerry, I'll do anything you say. I admit it, I found the stones, but I sold them to Pierre without telling you because I wanted to make a fast sale. I was going to give you your cut. Yeah, we don't believe it. Honestly. Oh, no. You and Frenchie are working together. You got him with you right now, ain't you? Well, uh, yes, but... Hey, two cops just came in the door. Two more came in another door. Here, you take the phone. All right. Sorry, your boys just got there. Good. They sure didn't waste any time. Oh, if Mary would only get on this phone Hello. now. Hello, Blackie. Mary, what's happening? Plenty. Dalton and Pierre ran to the kitchen door, but two policemen were there first. They, they fired a shot at the floor. Pierre gave up, but Dalton's running toward the bedroom. It's a dead end. He knows that now, and he's ducked behind the sofa. Oh, Blackie, now he's heading toward the front door. He's trying to get behind the policeman, but he can't. Good. And then two more cops just came in the door. Oh, Blackie, Dalton took a swing at one of them. He knocked him down. He, he's trying to make the door. But, Blackie, they got him. They got him. In other words, it's all over, huh? Yes, yes, it's all over, Blackie, including the shouting. That's good. Dalton and Pierre didn't get to your coat, did they? No. No, you know, they came up here to ask about it. They wanted to look at it. Why, Blackie? Because in the cuff of your sleeve, you'll find the missing Willowbrand diamonds. Uh, look, I'm in Faraday's office. Bring them down here right away, will you? Don't worry, I will. Bye. Bye. They got Dalton and Pierre, Faraday. Bob and Jerry ought to be a cinch to pick up. Yeah, we'll get them, all right. Phew. Gee, this is the first case I ever solved by remote control. You solved it? Where would you be if it weren't for my cops? Where would you be if it weren't for my brains? Faraday, all that's important is that those diamonds are on the way here. Mary's bringing them down. That means I've got to have you here until she arrives. It isn't worth it. You know it is, pal. Just think. Those diamonds will be back here where they belong by tonight. That's great. But I wish that you were back where you belong right now. (laughs) 